click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hello friends today we will discuss about a deadlock detection and recovery algorithm that is applicable for multiple instances of each resource type in a resource allocation system how to implement that algorithm using the banker's algorithm similarity and what are the detection usages that the factors on which the detection will depend and what are the advantages and disadvantages of using that detection algorithms as we know that the wait for graph is not applicable for multiple instances that is involved in a resource allocation system so for that type of instances or systems we now need to introduce another algorithm that will be similar to banker's algorithm it also is a several time varying data structure that is similar to banker's algorithm here we are defining some of the data structure only the first one is available that is a vector of length m and available j equals to k defines that there are k instances of resource type rj is available to the system the next request is a allocation allocation data structure determines an n cross m data structure or matrices that will tell allocation ij equals to k is k instances of resource type rj is allocated to process pi at that very time instances where n equals to number of processes and m equals to number of resource type and request data structure is an n cross m matrices that determines that how much more requests for resources can be made by a process so a request ij equals to k define that k instances of resource type rj may be requested by the process pi so now we will use this data structure and the banker's algorithm similarly to detect the deadlock in a system we will first tell that how the algorithm works here also like the banker's algorithm we first detect the for each row of allocation of request matrices as allocation i and request i and also there exists the less than equals to relation between them like request i should be less than allocation i and also request i should be less than available i so by following this data structures now we will know that first we are initializing finish i equals to false and all the processes at the beginning has not finished their work and work is equals to available as the normal banker's algorithm here we can see the difference because if the allocation is not equals to 0 that is why we are making the finish i initialization to false but if the allocation is 0 that means the process is not allocated any of the resources that mean the process is not executing in that set of processes of the system so we are putting finish i equals to true as the initialization next we are finding all the processes that belongs to i that finish i equals to process that the finish i is not finished and it is put to false and also the request i is less than available or works data structure here 
Now, if this to satisfy, then we will proceed to the next one. Otherwise, we will go to the step 4. So, in the third step, we are disallocating all the resources from process PI that is has been executed to make its finish I equals to true and then add them that allocation to the available matrix here which is designed to fork. Now, we will again go to step 2 to find another process if exists in the system. Now, if it is not finding any more I, then it will go to step 4. Now, if finish i equals to false for any processes that belongs to the system, that means the process is waiting for some resources that need to be released by some other resources. Now, the system is in a deadlock state. So, moreover, if finish i equals to false, then the system is in a deadlock state. Now, we may know that how, why after executing this step 2, which is telling us that the finish i equals to false and request i is less than work. So, if we know that the process i is requesting some resources that is less than the available resources and immediately we are releasing that resources to make them available again. So, why are you doing that? Then we can question that we got positive attitude that PI will never require any more resources to complete its unfinished task. We are assuming here this assumption. If our assumption is correct, then the system will be in safe state. And if it is not correct, then the system will be in unsafe state. Because process will need more resources that we have taken as already available. So, to illustrate this example, we will now see again like a banker's algorithm problem, which will happen with the available allocation and here request matrices. Now, we will solve the problem and see the system is in safe state or not. At any time instance T0, the system look like this where no process and resources are available and the P0 to P4, there are 5 processes involved in the system. So, at first, P0 is arriving in the system. It needs 0, 0, 0 available matrices which is also satisfying the need. So, that is why P0 will be put in the safe sequence. After that, P1 will be there. P1 needs 202 matrices, but already 000 is available to us. 
So no resources can be allocated to P1. Now we will move to P2. Now P2 needs the request of 000 and also available is 000. So we can put this one in a safe sequence. And as we know that the allocation will be added to the available one, P2 has finished its execution. So our new available become Now next P3 is arriving with a need of 100 which can be solved with the available resources 303. So now my available becomes available minus request. Now we will add the allocation of the P3 to my process availability. Now P4 is there which wants 002 request but as we know that we have only 7, 2 and 6 but if we consider this one it will be exited. So now again we will move to process P1. So 202 is less than 414 that is why it will be satisfied. And the allocation was P1 will be added to the available matrices. Now P4 will be allocated to the last sequence. So here this is the final available system and the safe sequence is like this. Now if the process P2 request one more instance of type C then the neat matrix becomes 0, 0, 1 here and the P2 cannot be allocated after P0 because the available matrix was still 0, 0, 0 and there the deadlock state will occur. Now the system will be in deadlock state with the resources in work P1, P2, P3, P4 as P0 is safe considered here. Now we need to know that what are the detection usages. First we need to check that how many times or how frequently the deadlock is occurring and how many processes are in the deadlock state. If the deadlock is occurring very frequently then the deadlock detection and recovery algorithm also be invoked very frequently because the resources that are allocated to deadlock processes will be idle until the deadlock did not break and all the processes that are attached to the deadlock will increase in number. Deadlocks occur only when a process cannot be immediately granted the resources it has requested. So it may be the final request that may complete the chain of waiting processes. For this extreme, we need to check every time the resource request cannot be granted a cycle detection algorithm. If it is detecting in the cycle, then can be with n into m square operation, where m denotes the number of resource type and n denotes the number of processes in the system. In this way, not only we can say that when the system is in deadlock state, but also we can mention that which particular process has caused the deadlock state. If there are many different type of resources involved in the system, that only single request to a request or resources may contain cycles in the resource allocation graph. At that cycles can tell us this which process has caused the deadlock and how many times the deadlock will occur 
still the processes cannot be removed from it now deadlock detection every frequent like for any 10 seconds or 10 milliseconds will cost an extra overhead of maintaining the relationship and the additional information now to improve from this overhead selection we can do the deadlock detection after a period of interval say once in an hour or every time the CPU belows the 40% utilization period. But if we can invoke the deadlock detection at any arbitrary point, at that point many cycles may occur in the resource allocation graph, thus we cannot identify the particular process which has caused the deadlock. So that's are the disadvantages of deadlock detection and recovery algorithm with also the advantage that it can detect the deadlock in particular way which can tell that which process has caused the deadlock. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.